together in the last month. I think we've had over 100 baptisms. So, uh, and you know, this video, this, uh, this is all done here. We're going out on the internet this, right now all over the world. Uh, the girl did this, took our video class, and we do have a video class to, that's taking place, media class they call it. And uh, they'll train you to help produce this kind of thing for the Lord's work. Uh, we're on television nine times a week. We're on television twice this morning. And uh, it's, uh, everything that's happening is not just happening right here. Uh, we've got three services going on right now. We've got, uh, if you like the wild guitar playing service, it's in the back. And uh, the more excited preaching. And we've already had an 830 service. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're here to reach you. But we don't want to just reach you. We want to go into all the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's very few places that we go that someone don't come up and say, I want you to know we're watching the program. And only God knows. Only God knows. How many lives are being touched? How many sick people that can't come out? How many shut-in people that watch these telecasts that couldn't be in our worship service uh, if it wasn't for the media team? And so we thank God for them. Our college is taking place right now. Uh, if you don't have a schedule, I've got one. I think there's some in the back, but we've got leadership training Got some of the top preachers across America that are teaching this uh, by the internet. And uh, we've got hermeneutics, understanding the scriptures. And we've got uh, uh, New Testament Restored, a class taught by a man that was a Catholic monk for many years. And uh, he wanted to go back and just be a Christian. Right. Just a Christian. And of course we've got uh, the, the theme going on, wouldn't you really rather be just a Christian? Amen. Not be caught up in any of this stuff. Not have to listen to what men say, but listen to what God says. And we've got t-shirts we'll even sell you. And the only song I ever wrote is about that. <laughs> and uh, it's probably going to be a number one. Number one, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to take the royalties, probably a couple of million, and distribute them, okay? But uh, it, it's exciting. And, and, you know, the people that are springing forth from the, the Restore the Power... I'm praying this past week have lifted up the Lord. And I thought I'd go to Romans chapter 12 where Paul, writing to the Christians at Rome, told them things that Christians ought to be doing. Uh, you do know from the book of Romans on, the Bible was written to Christians to tell them, now that you're a Christian... Here's what you're going to face, and here's what you need to be doing. Uh, there just had to be one book in the Bible that dealt with what must I do to be saved, and that was the book of Acts. Uh, you read the book of Acts, and in its entirety, it's salvation, 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 salvation. What must I do? But from Romans on, it's written to Christians telling you, what you're supposed to be and do now that you are a Christian. And it seems like a lot of people have never learned that. And uh, they're missing out on the great joy of just being a Christian. So chapter 12, we'll start with verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies... 
as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So many people come to me and they say, I wish I knew what God's will was for my life. Well, you can know what God's will is. And I think most of us really know what God wants us to do. But we let the flesh and we let the world and the enticements of the world keep us from doing what we know God has called us to do. So it says here that we can know what is the good and acceptable and reasonable will of God and the perfect will of God. But uh, you have to start out, number one, by uh, presenting your body as a living sacrifice and uh, not being conformed to the world. Uh, you know, we got a saying at the promised land, if you run the dogs, you're going to get the fleas. And uh, the Bible says evil companions corrupt good morals. And I can promise you, I can promise you, I can promise you, that anyone that has been a Christian that is not really doing what they should be doing has started conforming to the world and is running with the wrong people, listening to the wrong things, going the wrong places, and doing the wrong things. I can promise you that. I was watching uh, yesterday a... Uh, 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 a thing about the preacher that his wife killed him uh, down in Tennessee. And in her trial, they, they said, why would you ever get to the point? Here was a guy that was considered an outstanding preacher, outstanding leader. The people loved him. Said, what could, why would you ever get to the point that you'd want to kill him? She said, uh, he was that way in public. But she said he was making me watch pornography. He, she brought out a pair of high heel shoes, about 10 inches spikes. And she said, he made me wear these shoes. He made me do abnormal sex acts. Said he, he, he made my life, when the doors were shut, a living hell. And uh, she became afraid for her life, she said. But you know, you start listening and going and doing and thinking. J. Edgar Hoover said, I've never arrested a sex offender but what their house was filled with pornography magazines. He said, pornography, pornography. It's, Jesus said, it's what you think in your heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So Paul is saying here, don't, you, you don't be like the world. If you get a, a friend that's a worldly friend, they'll pull you down. They'll pull you down, I promise you. Uh, you invite them to go to church, and they'll invite you to go to a ball game. And you invite them to have a Coke, and they'll invite you to have a shot, and and, uh, you know, it, it's, you're, you're two different people. You're two different people. You're supposed to have a, two different masters. Who's the master of sin? Who's the master of, of illicit, wrong activities? Sure not God, but the master of a Christian is the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't be conformed to the world. Do what's God's will for your life. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a battle takes place. 
There's a battle taking place right now. You'll, you're constantly involved in battle. And the battle is for your mind. If, if Satan gets your mind, he's got everything you've got. And I see people probably every day that Satan has got their mind and therefore he's got all they've got. They're his servants. His servants you are, whom you obey, you see. His servants you are, whom you obey. And when Satan has your mind, you do whatever he tells you to do. I took a guy into the promised land this week that uh, retired and, and got a settlement check from the company, a good deal of money, and came down here and got to drinking with his friends and carousing with his friends. And before long, they had most, if not all, of his money. And then they came to him for some more money, and he said, I've not got any. And they beat him till they thought he was dead. And then they throwed him in a fire and burned him. And they had to, to operate on him and, and take his intestines out and work on him for months for him to survive. But that was a price he paid for the friends that he had chosen and for the life that he was living. There's a high price for low living. And you know, before I go buy anything, uh, people sometimes say I'm a Jew, and maybe I am. But I want to know what it costs. And I want to buy it as inexpensively as I can. Uh, you know, uh, to me, it's, it's not what you got, it's what you get to keep. And uh, if, you, if you give it all away, you don't get to keep very much. So uh, that's the way it is with your life. Don't be conformed. Don't be associated. You start running with the dogs, remember. Preacher said, we're going to get the fleas. When you lay in there scratching of a night and the hangovers and, and uh, your money's all gone and no honey, no money, no funny. Uh, you know, say, that's what the preacher said. That's what the preacher said. Don't be a part of this. Or it'll get you, for sure. And I'm just quoting the Apostle Paul. Now, here's what he said. For I say through the grace given to you, to everyone who's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. So many times we get to thinking, that uh, we're big, large, and in charge, don't we? And we've got our 401k and our IRA, and, and uh, everything's all right. But is it all right? That's the question. Don't start thinking to yourself more highly. Realize that what you have and what you ever hope to have depends on the grace and the mercy of God. And you really don't have anything. We're just renters. Uh, what I've got, I rent. And if I go to, if I go to meet God today, uh, he'll move somebody else in on it. You know, he's the landlord. I'm the renter. Uh, this world is not my home. Nothing in this world is my home. And... And you've got to keep that in your mind. Don't get to thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to. Humble yourself before the Lord and He will lift you up. Humble yourself. The, the service of the Lord starts on your knees. And on your knees is where you grow and become what God wants you to be. All right. I'm just giving you a little exegesis as we go along. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. 
God has given everybody some faith. Now, some's got more than others. Some trust him more than others. Some attain greater things through God than others. And a lot of it depends on the degree of faith, the measure of faith that God has given you. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. Not everybody's equipped to sing. There's things you can do that I am not capable at all of doing. Or if I do, I don't do a very good job. And there's things I can do that probably you can't do. You see, God equips us for the ministry that he wants us involved in. And, uh, you know, Coy's, Coy's equipped to raise money. He can, uh, when, if we need any money here, I just say, Coy, uh, go to work. And I'm not good at asking for money. I, I'm really not. And, uh, but he don't care a bit. He can, he can just go after you. And uh, this, this is one of his talents. I've said we could put him out here in the road with a handful of pencils, and in six months he'd own the road. Uh, he, he, is, he knows how to manipulate and transform money. Some people have that talent. Uh, some people have a talent of spending money. I think my wife got a little touch of that uh, when she came along, you know. Uh, I won't go any more there, but <laughs> you men know what I mean. You shop until you drop and, and that kind of stuff. We being many, are one body in Christ and individual members of one another. That's something we need to realize as Christians. You're my brother and you're my sister. This is the family of God. And we're obligated to each other. We're obligated to each other. We, we are to be a little bit better to each other than we are to anyone else, really. Uh, you see your brother standing by the road with a heavy load from the seed he sowed. You stop and say, brother, you're going the wrong way. And you try to show him a little kindness and a little love. Uh, we, we should love each other. I, I enjoy being with you, and I hope you enjoy being with me, and I hope that someday we can be in heaven together, and I can aggravate the daylights out of you for eternity. <laughs> All right. One body, one spirit. When you're not here, I miss you. When you're not here, I miss you. When you go astray, it breaks my heart. I care. And that's the way we're supposed to be about each other. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. A gift's no gift unless it's given. If your gift's prophecy, prophesy in proportion to your faith. If it's ministry, use it in your ministry. He who teaches is in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. Some people can just make you feel good. You know, they're exhorters. I have people that call me and they say, boy, you're, you're all right in my book. Well, you know, that may sound silly to you, but I need to hear that every now and then because sometimes you get thinking you're all wrong in everybody's book. And uh, everybody needs some encouragement. Everybody, and exhortation is, is a very honest and powerful gift. He who gives with liberality. If you give, give liberally. Don't just throw a few coins at them. Give them a $5 bill. Go all out. 
All right. <laughs> he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy, do it cheerfully. Have you ever had anybody show you mercy and make you feel like you're a low down, dirty dog while they're showing you mercy? Now, I'm going to do this for you, but I want you to know you're really a gutter sucking bum. That, that's not giving liberally with mercy. You know, you're supposed to be affectionate in your gifts. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. These are other things that Paul is telling the church at Rome that they need to do if they're Christians. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Hey, sounds like good advice to me. Don't lag in diligence. Be fervent in the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in one hope. Be patient in tribulation. Continue steadfastly in prayer. These are things that Christians are supposed to do. There's more to the Bible than Acts 2.38. We've got a lot of people that believe if you got Acts 2.38... You're going to be great. But that's just the beginning. That's just the birth. That's just the receiving of the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do then? Well, this is what Paul's telling us. There's these other things that you must do if you're going to be a blessing and a Christian and, and a, 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 a person that follows Jesus, you distribute to the needs of the saints. You rejoice in hope. You're patient in tribulation. You're given the hospitality. That means you invite the preacher over every now and then. And fix him a steak and a baked potato. <laughs> and a salad. You distribute to the needs of the saints. You bless those who persecute you. You bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Sometimes it's hard to be humble. But when you associate with the humble, you may learn a little humility. And don't think you know everything. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Did you know this was all in the Bible? Did you know this is what you're supposed to be doing and how you're supposed to be living if you really want to be a Christian? Regard no one evil for evil. Repay no one evil for evil. You know, the old saying, I don't get mad, I get even. That's, that's, not, that's not in the Bible. <laughs> Repay no one evil for evil. That's what the Bible says. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it's possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. As much as you can. As much as you can on your part. See, live at peace with all people. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, 
and we're coming to the end. Therefore, anytime you see therefore in the Bible, what do you say? What's it there for? Therefore, if your enemy's hungry, you feed him. If he's thirsty, you give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Love your enemies and drive them crazy. They can't figure it out. They, they lay awake of a night saying, I don't understand why they love me. I don't understand why they're being good to me as bad as I've treated them, as much as I've done to them. It, it drives them crazy. Love your enemies and drive them nuts. It works. Sometimes they'll call you and say, I don't understand this. Explain this thing to me. But you let God fight your battle. And it goes back to Matthew 6. Seek first the kingdom of God, do what's right, and let God handle it. Let God handle it. He knows how to handle it. And do not overcome evil. Do not be overcome by evil. But overcome evil with good. Now that I'm a Christian, wouldn't you really rather be a Christian? A Christian? Just a Christian? Wouldn't you really rather be a Christian? More than any other thing you know. For Jesus. Listen. Wouldn't you really rather live for Jesus? Cause he's the one who loves you so. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> That's that.